here with Speaker Chris Steele, and we're talking about legislation 2135 that he's introduced uh, concerning smoking. Can you tell us a little bit about why you introduced the bill, Speaker? Sure, and thank you for the opportunity to visit with you about this issue. Currently, Oklahoma is only one of two states that does not allow local communities to set forth ordinances pertaining to smoking in public places or enforcement of uh, the selling of tobacco products um, to, to people who may be uh, under the age of 18. And so what we wanted to do is eliminate what is called preemption, which prohibits uh, local communities from passing ordinance ordinances related to this issue, it actually, state law would preempt local communities from having the right to pass the ordinances that they feel would be um, in the best interest of their constituents and, and best match the values of the, the residents that live within their area. And so what this particular legislation does is it just empowers local communities and, and local individuals to work with their, the, the government that's closest to them uh, in order to set forth policies related to the use of tobacco in public places. Uh, so that's what we've done. Why is now the time for this legislation? Well, we've been uh, trying to st take steps forward, you know, in, in previous years to try to improve the overall health of our state and, and, and really try to make sure that we're advancing what I would consider conservative policies. Last year in particular, we, we passed a, a piece of legislation referred to as the Healthy Initiatives legislation. And, and that particular measure uh, created a, an opportunity for communities, if they so choose, to meet certain criteria to become what would be referred to as a certified Oklahoma healthy community. And I think it's important that we raise public awareness and really empower individuals to make good decisions that will help them uh, live healthier, more productive lives. And as you know, we struggle with many health outcomes in the state of Oklahoma, uh, heart disease, cancer, lung disease, stroke, diabetes, obesity, things of, of that nature, many of which of, of these, many of these d diseases can be prevented and they are preventable. And so we want to try to raise awareness and, 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 and help people, Oklahomans, take control of their own health issues. This will impact tremendously the health of our citizens. There are over 6,000 Oklahomans that die of secondhand smoke or uh, lung health uh, related diseases each year. In particular, related to workplace laws, how do you see this as a benefit? This will protect all workers. Right now, our restaurant and our bar and some of our other public um, workplaces are not protected and they sometimes can't get another job and they have to work in those environments. This law will allow communities to pass ordinances. Tell me why you support this bill. Oklahoma is one of only two states that currently does not let local communities have the opportunity to talk about this issue, to make good decisions for their communities, to keep them healthy. Oklahoma and Tennessee. This bill was passed in 1987 on behalf of a tobacco lobbyist. It's time we change that, get rid of big tobacco sold on Oklahoma. Why give local communities control of this issue? Because they're closer to the people. All other states around us, let me use Texas as an example. The top 10 largest cities in Texas, among others, are smoke free. That was done city by city because the people there in that city decided this is what we want to do. And now in 29 other states, they've gone ahead and done it statewide. Businesses, particularly bar owners that complain, restaurant owners, come back and say, we wish we had done this a long time ago. Our business insurance costs are lower. Our employee absenteeism is lower. It's a healthier state. And it helps us attract more business to Oklahoma. So it's a health issue, but it's an economic development issue too. Is there an economic impact to unhealthy Oklahoma behavior? An economic impact for that? Obviously, we've been ranked 49th out of 50 states in our health overall rankings. We've now come up to 46th. That's due to immunizations, but it doesn't have a thing to do with our high rates of smoking, the tobacco use, and of course, we have other issues too.
We have a broad coalition, uh, the Lung Association, Smoke Free Oklahoma, the Cancer Society, AARP, uh, a bipartisan piece of legislation. What Can you speak just a minute to what it means to have a broad, diverse coalition behind a piece of legislation like this? Uh, it's very, very helpful uh, when we have the, the coalition, a broad coalition like we have in place to help with this particular piece of legislation. And I think the great thing about the, the advocates that are supporting this piece of legislation is they all understand the importance of empowering individuals in, in trying to improve uh, the overall environment within our state and, and I'm honored to work with the individuals that are supporting this bill and I'm, I'm optimistic about a, a successful outcome. Thank you Mr. Speaker. Thank you.